Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. And to talk about language learning, to talk about language learning books. Uh, please again, subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Uh, you can tick on the little bell to get notifications and uh, please also join me at Link, which is where I do most of my language learning. Before I jump into the subject of books, I just want to quickly review my statistics. You'll see that uh, uh, my sort of uh, new words or known words added is a little below my average. Um, inevitably, we're going to have periods where we're a little bit less motivated. That's why I did the video about variety. It's important to vary your activities because after a while doing the same thing over and over again, yes, sort of your motivation starts to flag. So if you look at my statistics, you'll see I'm, this is probably has been my slowest week. The other thing is that the weather has been good. The weather is good again today. So I'm going golfing with my wife. And I mean, the activity of language learning has to be enjoyable. So uh, you, you don't want to push when you're really not that motivated. Or sometimes you do push to try to get into it. And once you get into it, you're happy that you're there, like getting into a very, very hot bathtub. Uh, or a very cold swim, for example. At any rate, books. Okay, so one of the things that happens when I learn a language is I get interested in the history and the culture that surrounds that language. And so I like, you know, exploring different aspects of the history. So I found this book and it's a history of Cairo. It's very interesting. It sort of tells the story of this city, tracing it back to the ancient Egyptians to the period when the Greeks were there and the Romans were there and then various, uh, you know, um, caliphate out of Damascus and then the Fatimids who came in from Tunis, Tunisia and who were Shia and there was a great flowering of culture and science and tolerance of uh, Christians and Jews, you know, uh, Christians were dominant, I think, up until, uh, at least up until the period of the Fatimids, the Coptic, the original uh, Christians of Egypt. And then, of course, the Mamelukes came in and they re-established Sunni as the dominant religion. They were less tolerant. Uh, and then you had this period of uh, the Ottoman Empire. And then you had uh, this Albanian interlude with, uh, I can't remember, Muhammad Ali, maybe? Mustafa Ali, I can't remember. Anyway, and then uh, then you had the uh, you know, Napoleon and increasing uh, sort of colonialist type pressures from uh, European countries. Uh, sort of a, a, call it a flowering at a very top level for, uh, you know, Italians and French and Brits and people within Cairo society who kind of uh, uh, interact with them. And that's about as far as I've come. But it's an interesting story. It's a collection of stories. Now, imagine that this were available in Arabic, uh, a series of 20 minute stories, different sort of vignettes of people in Cairo over the centuries with audio. I mean, with, if it's just a book, then with a glossary, but with an extensive glossary, or ideally we bring it into link, we have the audio, we can look words up. That would be, I mean, if this whole book were converted into Arabic stories, that would keep me busy for months and it would be fascinating for me. Now, I'm a sucker for books, so when I look for books, around Arabic, on the internet, on Amazon, a number of things obviously get suggested to me and I end up buying them. So I bought a thing called, you know, modern Arabic short stories. The problem is that they don't have really any kind of glossary. They just have a translation, which is very inconvenient to work with. So I haven't gotten into it yet. I am hoping that when my Arabic gets good enough that I can read without being assisted by, by my iPad, by being able to look words up or hear the text to speech or do all the other things that we do at link to be able to look at each sentence with a natural voice. And, and, and when I really can hit a book, then I'll be reading this. But for the time being, no. Uh, one of my earlier investments was in, uh, of course, Asimil, which is somewhere here, but uh, here we are. Yeah, I got so many of these. So Asimil, it's okay. But it's the same few voices every every lesson. And the lessons, the content is a little silly after a while. I, I didn't really find this all that great. Uh, and it's quite expensive for what you get. On the subject of stories, I've also bought this, The Travels of Ibn Battuta, very famous, I believe Moroccan, 
who traveled the, the known world at that time. Uh, again, unfortunately, as in many of these uh, books that they do at universities, they want to fill it with a lot of comprehension questions and uh, other exercises to turn it into more of a project for them. All I would really want is the text with audio. So that's, again, something I'll be looking forward to when I'm better. Here again, I've bought modern Arabic short stories, always in the hope that I'll get audio and there is no audio, but this is at least bilingual. But bilingual is also awkward because you're having to switch back and forth from one language to another. And I prefer um, glossaries or the way we do it, of course, at link. Then here's a thing called focus on contemporary Arabic with online media. Okay, now the problem with this uh, and the sort of companion piece, uh, we, this is all from Shukri Abed, spoken uh, standard Arabic. Uh, so there we do have glossaries, but again, lots of um, exercises. But the problem is the accompanying media is DVD. DVD means I got to sit there and watch it. I don't want to sit there and watch it. I want to take away, take it away and listen to it. More of the same. However, again, these are things that when I'm more comfortable reading away from the computer, I will get at those. Um, so then what else did I get myself? Media Arabic, media Arabic. Again, you get into it and it's full of all kinds of advice on how to read critically, make sure you evaluate the sources and what they're saying and all of these uh, you know, teaching of critical thinking, which I consider to be uh, a fad, basically. When you read, you should be able to evaluate the text as well as their sources. What are facts and what are opinions in the news you are reading? This is supposed to be teaching language. First of all, I don't believe you can teach critical thinking. I think the ability to think critically is based on your knowledge. If you know a lot about a subject, you are able to evaluate it and you can think critically. If you don't know very much, there is no sort of theory of teaching critically, theory of making sure you evaluate the sources. Knowledge leads to critical evaluation. So nevertheless, uh, I will have another look at this, but the, again, the font is so small. You know, Arabic is difficult for the beginner like me to read. So um, yeah. And of course the other problem, I, but I'm a sucker, so I buy these things, uh, advanced media Arabic. Again, the problem is, this one has nice font, by the way. This one has really nice font, but has lots of drills and exercises and translations and stuff. And the other problem is, Media Arabic means that they are taking articles from the BBC, from France Van Cat, from Al Jazeera, that are five years old. Well, I can get up-to-date articles from those news sources, and I can study them looking up words uh, because it's online. So really, what do they provide here? Not very much, a very small glossary for each, uh, for each uh, of these, but, but it does have the advantage that I have them written out and for me to read them in text in a book, as opposed to reading them online, introduces an element of variety. So I don't think it's a great investment, but it's part of my investment in introducing some variety in what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I did buy this here, Mastering Arabic, uh, again, from Hippocrine, not very good. Lots of drills, uh, very difficult to read font, um, but it's something there that when I get tired of what I'm doing, I can go in and have a look. But again, it doesn't cover much ground. The other thing, of course, is we need so much content. We need so much content because after we get past the sort of original stage, the word frequency declines very quickly. So we have to be covering so much content, so much content. There are books that, anyway, I won't go through them all. Sometimes I don't mind looking at sort of lists of vocabulary. This book is quite good uh, for different sort of subject areas. Again, in the, in the sense of, of doing things that are a little different so that you introduce variety into what you are doing. However, for me, the, the best would be sort of a history of a history of the Levant. There's so much history there. Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Egypt, uh, the North Africa, the Barbary Coast, all this kind of stuff. Give us the history in digestible morsels or simply a story of people. 
or modern short stories, audio and text, 25, uh, starting with five minutes long, 15 minutes long, audio. That's what I would like to see with far fewer drills, comprehension questions, and all this other stuff, teaching you how to think critically. Uh, and, uh, and, oh, and I should say that on a number of them, Georgetown University in particular, they promise you uh, audio, and you go there and there's no audio. So you have a sense that these very expensive textbooks produced by uh, universities add very little, are quite disorganized and misleading in terms of what they offer the people who buy these expensive books. However, I remain a sucker for books. Uh, I like covering the same ground uh, in different ways. I try, you know, I get in there, I try to read these, but it's too early for me because I'm just not good enough at reading Arabic. However, study of Arabic, the study of the Arab world, it's going to be with me for a long time. So I'm in no great hurry, actually. I'm just enjoying, you know, immersing myself in things Arabic. Uh, and of course, at the end of my 90 day challenge, I'll swing back to Persian. And I've already bought some books on Persian history in English. Plus, I have my history of Iran in Persian prepared by Sahra in Iran, which is on link. So I'll just continue to wallow in all this stuff and enjoy myself. So that's what I wanted to say. Bit of a ramble on language learning books. Bye for now.